whose voices often do not get heard. My lords, we all owe a great debt of gratitude to the brave men and women who have served and continue to serve us so valiantly in our armed forces at home and in combat overseas. In my own part of the United Kingdom, Northern Ireland, we will never forget their efforts and in many cases their sacrifices during the height of the Troubles. For that reason, I welcome and will always welcome moves by Her Majesty's Government to give greater standing to the Armed Forces Covenant across the entirety of the United Kingdom. It is important to state that there should be no impediment allowed which would block veterans from being treated fairly and equitably in any part of the United Kingdom. In Northern Ireland, the New Decade New Approach Agreement committed the Government to legislate to further incorporate the Armed Forces Covenant into law and support its total implementation. It is right and it is just that the Bill before us today should treat Northern Ireland veterans and service personnel exactly the same as in other parts of the United Kingdom with full implementation of the Military Covenant. The failure to fully implement the Covenant in Northern Ireland up to this point has let down our brave veterans. It is right that this injustice should be brought to an end. Veterans across this nation should indeed have full access to a full range of services. We owe it to our armed forces to do better. We owe it to them to provide a duty of care for legal, pastoral and mental health support. My Lords, it is a historical fact that were it not for the bravery and courage of our armed forces and security personnel, there would never have been a peace process in Northern Ireland, and we would not have the relative peace that we enjoy today. We therefore have a duty here and in the other place to protect those who have protected us. This stretches further and beyond the vital health and mental issue provision services which are under discussion. We must also protect our brave men and women from malicious charges and questionable legal claims. We should value the principle that access to justice remains open for us all. To that end, it is worth noting in the strongest terms that there should never be any question of a blanket amnesty being offered. Where a murder, ha murder has been committed, the law does and must apply equally. equally Cases which have already been thoroughly investigated and in some cases reinvestigated and for which no new evidence has been brought forward should not be continually reopened in order to satisfy a particular agenda. There can be no moral equivalence between terrorists or those accused of terror offences and people accused of having committed offences when they were members of the armed forces trying to protect us against the terrorists. My Lords, those who served our country valiantly deserve some form of legislative protection against continual cycles of reinvestigation when they have been previously investigated and when no compelling evidence has been brought. Where service personnel have been fairly judged to have carried out their duties, often in extremely difficult circumstances and a great risk to themselves, their Actions should not be second-guessed years or decades later in the interests of political expediency. British soldiers operate under the highest possible standards and with strict rules of engagement. The vast majority of servicemen and women act within the law in the service of their country. In any conflict, there are, of course, exceptions to this. The majority of victims and veterans, however, do not seek a blanket amnesty from prosecutions. They seek fair and equitable justice. Regrettably, what we have witnessed to date in recent decades has been a two-tiered approach to these sensitive issues. In some instances, decisions have been taken to shield the victim-maker rather than deliver justice. As it relates to Northern Ireland specifically, the early release of convicted terrorists under the terms of the Belfast Agreement and the subsequent securing of royal pardons through the on-run schemes equally perverted the criminal justice system. These are historical examples where dangerous legal precedents have been set. We must at all times work hard to find proportionate answers to these extremely difficult questions. 
These answers will not be found if we follow a path which finds any equivalence between brave soldiers and the terrorists and criminals who they protect us against when on the battlefield. My Lords, we stand foursquare behind our troops and we must support all efforts to ease the burden for our brave soldiers. Our veterans and today's servicemen and women do not expect the path they have chosen to be an easy path. I welcome the work that has been done to date and it is clear, however, that we have still much work to do. But, my Lords, I firmly believe that the passage of this Bill into law will make a significant contribution to the improvement of the welfare of our brave servicemen and women. Uh, my Lords, I too thank the Minister and join in the tribute.